Hey there, my name is Gary Sims and this is Gary Explains. So ChatGPT4, I think they're just calling it GPT4, is now out and of course it's better than the previous one. So what I want to do today is have a look at ChatGPT4 and see what is new. So if you want to find out more, please let me explain. So hopefully you've had a chance to play yourself with ChatGPT 3.5 and you've also seen my previous videos on ChatGPT. I've got three of them at the moment, one kind of looking at how it works, another one to see if you can learn to program in let's say the C programming language using it, and another one to compare the Bing version of ChatGPT with the version 3.5. But now we've now got uh, Chat uh, GPT 4, GPT 4, and it's got three major improvements. The first is it's greater at, it's better at creativity and we'll show some of what it can do in a creativity point of view. Second thing is it can now take visual input. I don't yet have access to the ability to take visual input. However, it is something that should be coming soon. They did demo it. So not just images that are on the web from like 10 years ago, but you know, you can give it a new image here now and it can, you know, do things with that, describe it, you know, find out what it is, say what's wrong with that image, or even use it to translate, you know, a sketch into a, a web interface they've demonstrated. That's pretty powerful. And the third thing is it, it can do bigger context. So there's much more words it can take and use that bigger context to generate better uh, in, you know, output. Okay, so let's go straight over to the uh, web browser and let's just start playing with GPT-4 and see what it can do. Okay, so here we are inside of ChatGPT. I've got the plus subscription, so I've got access to ChatGPT4. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the readme file from my Piccolo OS. If you remember, Piccolo OS is the uh, multitasking operating system I wrote for the Raspberry Pi Pico. And I've cut and pasted that in there. It's quite a long document where I explain all about how it works with stacks and stack pointers. And there's code, there's even references here at the end. There's licensing information, you know, acknowledgements and so on. And so what we're gonna say is we want it to write a poem about Piccolo uh, OS. It can actually quite wax lyrical. Write a poem about the above text in just four verses. Earlier on I tried this and it, I think like a 15 uh, verse poem. Let's see what it does now here. In a land of Raspberry Pi Pico we find a multitasking OS quite one of a kind. Piccolo OS, a teaching tool you'll see with cooperative and preemptive versions one and three. From kernels to task stacks, they switch and dance. Round robin fashion, they get all get a chance. Main and process stacks, quarters M0 core, context switching, six sys tick, there's more. All right, so <laughs> that's one of the main points about uh, GPT-4 is it's greater at uh, creativity. So it was able to take a very bland, I like to think uh, informative, but very bland document about multitasking operating systems and turn it into, into a poem. Let's do something similar to that for something else. Explain the plot of Pinocchio in a sentence where each word has to begin with the next letter in the alphabet from A to Z without repeating any letters. So that's quite a challenge uh, to do that. We'd all find that quite challenging to do unless you're some kind of literary genius or something. Let's see what it does. So, alas, boy, calf desires, experiences, Marriott nose obstructs. <laughs> so as you can see, look, it's going A, B, C, D, E, and you know, strings terminate. There you go. <laughs> S, T, U, V, ultimately ventures. It's putting the word xylophonist in there for someone who plays a xylophone uh, because it's had to pick, you know, all these letters. So they go actually accidentally use those uh, letters uh, one at a time. Let's, uh, let's ask it uh, something a bit easier now. Let's say, and now explain the plot in a three verse poem. So it's back to Pinocchio. In a quaint Italian town, a craftsman's hand carved a wooden puppet, a boy to understand. Dreams of life and laughter, the sparks began to glow. Upon his quest of truth, through trials he did go. A cat and a fox deceived him, lies made his knives grow. Yet brave and pure of heart, he learned to be a hero. <laughs> okay, so look, the story of Pocono, a tale of love and glee. So you can get it to be creative even about things, we didn't give it the story of Pinocchio. We didn't say, here's the text. It knows what Pinocchio is. It has this kind of knowledge. And of course that's true of, uh, of GPT 3.5, uh, but this one was able to be much more creative in what it can do with that knowledge. Now I tried this one earlier and, it, and actually if this doesn't give us a good answer now, I'll show you what it produced earlier because of course you can never guarantee what it's gonna do. Write, uh, this is in the C language, write a tiny interpreter for a new programming language. I haven't told it what programming I want it to do. Let's see if it will write me a tiny interpreter. It says, okay, it uh, 
requires uh, designing a simple language with grammar and basic implementation, blah, blah, blah. For this purpose, let's design a very basic language called TinyLang that supports only integers, assignment, addition, and printing. Here's an implementation of a TinyLang interpreter. Okay, now, well, let it do this. I've had this TinyLang thing from it before, and the version it gave me last time didn't work. There were compile errors. I want to see what it comes up with this time. But I will show you in a minute a version that it did come up with that worked perfectly, absolutely perfect, straight out of the box. Uh, I compiled it and it worked great. Let's just let this finish and then we'll have a look. Okay, so I've put in the code here as it gave it to us. Now the point is this, is it takes this string of what it's going to do. So print one plus two plus three. So let's just run that and see what happens. So if we run the TL tiny language, we're six. Okay, let's edit that and see if it does something uh, better. So obviously you'd want to improve this to add something you can type in yourself. Let's see what happens if we do uh, 10 divided by five plus two. Okay, recompile that and run it. Unexpected token, so 10, unexpected, so it's failed. Now, let me show you one it did actually give me later, and this was called Poplang uh, from ChatGPTC. And this is basically uh, a language that it invented that you can put things on and off a stack, and you can add, subtract, multiply, divide, and print the value on the top of the stack. That's what it can do. And this code worked out of the box straight away. Uh, and so we can run, uh, we can run a pop, uh, lang here and if so if I put 10 on the stack and then 20 and then do add it'll add them together that's now on the stack I then do print 30 comes out okay if I now do uh, you know 100 and then uh, 90 and do sub okay and then do print it's given me 10 uh, and if I do you know 180 sub and then I put three on there, and then I do multiply, and then do print. We get 60, because 100 minus 80 is 20, multiplied by three, and then you get 60, and that's it, and it works. And, and, and this has actually been working pretty well. And that all came straight from ChatGPT4 uh, without any problems uh, whatsoever. Now, there are some, uh, you can try to get to debug the code that you've had. I've not had much success with that. Haven't tried that much now with ChatGPT4. That would be an interesting experiment. Now, while there are some big improvements, it still doesn't manage maths very well. For example, what is 7 to the power of 42? If we try that, let's see what it gets. Power of 42 is a large explosion that requires a large number. Here's the result. And that's wrong. I know because I did this in my other video, that's not the right answer. If you ask Bing, it gets it right. Wolfram Alpha gets it right. So with math stuff like that, it isn't uh, isn't very good still, although it's reasoning, they say, is much better. Here's an interesting uh, one that we can try. Is there a connection between Elvis Presley and Kurt Russell? Both of them, of course, actors, musicians, uh, and so on, famous people. Let's see, is there a connection? I happen to know there is, because I heard it once in an interview. Yes, there is a connection between Elvis Presley and Kurt Russell. In 1963, when Kurt was just a child actor, he appeared in a small role along Elvis Presley in the musical It Happened at the World's Fair. And that's absolutely true. That's what happened. Uh, and apparently the story is they also played table tennis together during kind of the, the waiting times for being called on, on to set. And then it goes on also to hear say that Kurt Russell also uh, played Elvis uh, in a movie. So this is <laughs> this is kind of like, you know, that guy that you know, uh, but that, that lady that you know that has this amazing amount of knowledge. And you can say, hey, did you, you know, this trivia? And you can ask it questions and, uh, you know, it will give you the answer to these. So, yeah, there you go. If you want lots of trivia, it will certainly give it to you. One last thing we're going to try, and this is really amazing. You, you can tell ChatGPT how to behave. You are a computer science teacher that always responds in a Socratic style. You never give the student the answer, but always try to get them to answer the, you know, answer the question themselves. So basically, uh, you know, you don't, it doesn't just say, here's the code. It says, well, how would you write the code? So how do you write a Python code to find prime numbers in one and 100? But it's not going to give me the answer. It's acting as a computer. What do you know about prime numbers and their properties? Can you help identify them uh, in a range of numbers? Uh, yes, they can only be divided by one and themselves. That's correct. 
Now, can you think of a way to iterate through the numbers in a given range to test uh, yeah, using a loop, I'm going to say. Great. Which type of loop do you think would be the most appropriate for this task and how would you structure it? A while loop, I'm going to say. OK, good choice. Can you think of a way to set up a while loop to iterate through the numbers from 1 to 100? Uh, yes. Set i to uh, 1 and then do a while loop testing i is less than 100. That's a good start. Now within the loop, how can you test if a number i is prime? What additional loops or approach would you need to use? And so on, so we could sit here and just chat to it. So the point is here, it's acting as a tutor, as a teacher without giving me the direct answer. And this could be very, very powerful uh, for getting people to learn concepts in maths and uh, you know and science and computer science and so on. This really could be a way, not just getting the answer, but getting to think uh, for ourselves. Okay, so there you have it, GPT-4, definitely an improvement over what we had in uh, 3.5 and certainly shows us the direction these things are going in. I'd love to hear from you in the comments about do you use uh, ChatGPT or GPT-4? What do you think of the new version and so on? Okay, that's it. My name's Gary Sims. This is Gary Explains. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do give it a thumbs up. And if you like these kind of videos, then I invite you to stick around by subscribing to the channel. Okay, that's it. I'll see you in the next one.